All right, Sports Squad here with Coach Womack from, from South Alabama football. Uh, Coach, how has the offseason been for the squad and just getting ready in a few weeks to start your fall camp? How's, yeah. how's it going? It's right here now, isn't it? I mean, we're, we're ready to roll. Um, it's really rewarding as a head coach. You come in with a vision and, and you bring uh, players and coaches in uh, into our our program and start um, – you know, building a culture, right, and a winning formula. Um, and so it's really rewarding to go into year three. A lot of those systems and culture and expectations are in place. And now you've got a group of people, uh, not just players, but also some of our coaches. And Major Applewhite is our offensive coordinator. Corey Batoon is our defensive coordinator. A number of, uh, of guys that build continuity in your program. And so what's fun for me is you get a chance to, to kind of focus on some of those finer details in year three. Yeah, what was about last year that made that big turnaround? for you that big jump to get to seven conference wins and uh, double digit wins overall what was it about the squad last year what can you take from that and carry over into this year well i think you know in 2021 right we were in close games with some of the best in our conference you know lost by uh, three points to louisiana lost in overtime to coastal carolina i'm not sure we expect to be in those moments and i think a year ago our players expected to be in those moments and expected to produce in those moments and so I think building consistency and building expectation was a huge part of our success in 22. We've, we've encouraged our players and we challenge our players daily, coaches included, for everybody in our building to just crank the dial forward. You've got this experience, you've got this production, you've got systems in place, but if we can all crank the dial forward in our respective areas, the outcome collectively is going to take care of itself. Yeah, I spoke with Carter earlier today, Carter Bradley, your in, incoming starting quarterback. How big is that for having a guy like him back on the team and uh, leading that offense for you? You know, I don't know if in South Alabama's history we've had a return turning starter at the quarterback position. So it's really an exciting thing. You know, it was so impressive what he was able to do in a short amount of time to come in, earn the starting job, and produce at really a high level even from from the first part of the season on, and then to do it consistently all year long. Um, I'm excited to see him take that next step, not only with the chemistry of our players, but the chemistry of our coaches and Major Applewhite and under his understanding of the league itself and what he has to do uh, to put his teammates in, in the best position possible. And so that's something that uh, – that we're all looking forward to going into year two with him. Yeah, and talked to Yam Banks also earlier today. Very humble uh, guy, but preseason All-Conference, All-America, pre- team on preseason All-America list. Yeah. It was like having a, such a dynamic defensive back on your squad and him anchoring that uh, defense for you. Well, you know, obviously Yam is a tremendous talent, but he also has great instincts. And when you have a great talent with instincts and you add the experiences that he's had, he's going to play with greater anticipation the more he's on the field. That really collectively for for the rest of our defense, I mean, we really have 11 returning starters on defense, including Keith Gallman and Quentin Wilfon that were out with injury a year ago are now back. Um, You look at that group of guys, and defense is about playing with anticipation, right? That experience, like Yam Banks and a number of guys, right, plays into that. And I think... uh, I think that's something that we're all all excited on and focused on. What's the energy like playing in a place like Mobile in that uh, that Gulf Coast area? Football is so strong in that uh, Florida, Alabama, uh, you know, border area, uh, and just the intensity of it. Yeah. It was like, and, and now the anticipation is so much higher with the program now. What's it been like seeing go, going there and starting out, and now after last season and the community now? You know, uh, we live in a very football-rich state, right? Yeah. And, uh, and and we take pride in our football uh, in that state, and certainly the, the community of Mobile is no different than that. Uh, I thought we took a huge step forward uh, when, we, when we added Hancock Whitney Stadium and on-campus stadium a few years ago. Our game day atmosphere continues to get uh, more and more electric. The tailgating atmosphere, all those things play into building a championship program and an environment that our players love to compete again, and hopefully an environment that's hostile for our opponents to play under. Yeah, and then also Senior Bowl is there. How, right. how, is that, how is that a tool for you as well? Because, you know, you, all the scouts around the entire country know how to get to your campus now. Right. Literally, how is that beneficial for you? And when you think about the what the Senior Bowl does for us, what, an entire week of, of all, you know, scouts, uh, you know, um, uh, heads of, of organizations, right, from general managers to head coaches to 
to all those things that are that are on your campus for an entire week. It's tremendous exposure for our community and, and the university and certainly our football program as well. And so to be able to utilize that from a piece of recruiting um, and, and how we engage our community through the Senior Bowl uh, is, a, is a huge piece to our success as well. Yeah, and then lastly, just what are some things that team obviously won't win every game, win a championship and everything, but what are just some things you're going to have to execute and do well yeah. to really reach the goals that you have for this year? Well, I, I think, you know, you look at some of the things that um, as proud as we are of the 10 losses, you really have to almost focus more, or excuse me, the 10 wins, mm -hmm. you got to focus on the three losses, right? And so, um, you know, what did we not do well enough in those games and what do we have to focus on and adjust moving forward? I think handling tempo on defense, we've got to continue to get better at that. Offensively, we, you know, this is a tough league to consistently run the ball in and we did a pretty good job of that. But, you know, first and second down runs, how do we find ways against the best defenses in this league to establish a run game um, that, that we're going to be able to lean on no matter who we face? So those are some of the more fine details and, and, and I think if you're focused on those things, uh, you know, you, you got a chance to, to change the outcome moving forward.